What is going on guys, Shotgun here, back with another video, this is episode 3, I think it's episode 3 or 4, I don't know, it's been a while, but yeah, I think it's episode 3 of our uh, Let's CTF series, so this episode, or this video in this episode is going to be a little bit different from my previous videos, because um, unlike my previous videos where I go to the machine, capture the flag, call it a day, um, in this video, I'll be mapping my step to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. I'll show you how these techniques um, are used by real world attackers. Um, so if you don't already know what MITRE ATT&CK is, um, I'll probably do a video on that one later, but it's pretty much a framework for mapping your attacks. Yeah, so that being said, let's get on with the video. Before I even start the video, what I'm going to do is I will be updating all my um, packages so that I don't have to worry about updating things in between because every time I record the video it's always like oh this thing is not updated or it's missing this dependency this doesn't work anymore so I just want to make sure everything's updated and ready to go so I don't have to you know pause the video recording so yeah oh that is kind of new all right everything's up to date all right so we've got to learn search maybe sort by I don't really mind it can be whatever uh, difficulty media oh. for now I'll probably go with easy because I don't want to spend too much time on these machines uh, room type we don't want walkthrough we just want CTF uh, for this one I'll go to not completed because I don't want to reattempt the machine that I've already done and subscription is going to be free only out of all these uh, let's try this one, the Bricks Heist, because um, I haven't done RCCV in a while. So um, let's start that one. So let's go through the goal of the challenge. Uh, so from 3 million bricks to 3 million transactions. Brick Press Media Co. was working on creating a brand new web theme that represents a renowned wall using 3 million byte bricks. Isn't Murphy, come to the streak of bad luck, and here we go again. The server is compromised and they've lost access. So uh, can you hack back the server and identify what's happening? So it looks like a classic case of. Um, Someone trying to set up something and something's outdated or something's not patched or something doesn't have like a proper credential set up and uh, someone gets into the machine. Um, easy as that. So as you said, it's a brand new web theme. So I'm guessing there's going to be a web server. Um, so probably port 80 will be open. Port 443 might be open. Um, what a kind of a hidden file. Oh, okay, yeah. So... I don't want to be reading this because I've already seen two of these and it's kind of a spoiler. So, you know what? Um, let's minimize this for now and uh, we'll go back here like we always do. We'll change to desktop. We'll create a workstation sort of thing where we can start storing all our files. Um, make directory and it's going to be called, uh, what was the name of the machine again? It was called a brick heist. Bricks heist, okay. Uh, make directory bricks oh, actually heist. All right, so change drive right to bricks heist. Um, yeah, so um, over here. Oh, okay, so we got to start our open VPN, which we haven't already done it. So sudo open VPN, and we're gonna have an open VPN file in here. All right, so. Of course it wants a password and uh, let's just copy this so 10 not 10 12 84 let's see if we can ping it so ping all right so this IP is pingable which is good so like it is saying um, add this to your Etsy host file Probably a good idea because I am very bad at remembering IP addresses. Sometimes I put extra number. I realized in my last video, so instead of doing 10.10, .10, I think I was doing like 10.100 or something stupid. So in order to avoid that, it's always a good idea to add your stuff to the Etsy host file. Alright, so in order to add our thing to the Etsy host, uh, this is what we're going to echo. echo. Um, so the IP address is 10.10.12.84. .10 and the name of the file or name of the domain is going to be bricks.thm 
and we'll just close that one. Let's just sudo t minus a, and we'll add this to Etsy um, hosts. All right, so let me just double check it. Turn it to the 84. Brick to DHM sudo. Yep. All right, that sounds about right to me. And if I do ping bricks dot dhm it should take me to that one now so now we know that it's a web server but let's just start with all the open port um so in order to do that i'll just do ruskin minus a and we'll just say https what is this bricks dot dhm Oof, what did i do we're at 4 for not me 208k. Alright, you know what? Let's do that. Alright, that's better. Okay. Uh, 10.10.84 10 to 22. Okay, so the port 22 is open, which is SH. Port 80 is open, which is HTTP. Port 443 is open. That's uh, HTTPS. And then uh, 3306. Oh, I don't know. I think it's. Where have I seen this one before? Uh. So I know it's, I think it's MySQL, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so we can see all the port that's open uh, for now. See how quick it is. This is why I like Rust scan over Nmap, but still Nmap's a goat anyway. All right, um, let's go to a web address. See what's going on. What was it? Uh, bricks .dhm. Is that what we call it? Wait, what? Bricks .dhm. All right, let's see. HTTPS. Oh, there you go. Okay. Ah, brick by brick. What is this? Uh, let's see. Before we even start, let's see robots.txt. Ooh, I think I know what's in there. See that? I know that sign. That's a WordPress. Uh, allowed OP admin. Da 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 da. Disallowed. OP. Okay, so nothing very useful on a, a robots file. WP admin, let's do that. So log in for the WordPress. Cause I shouldn't be saying this, but my portfolio is built in WordPress. So yeah, there you go. Uh not now. Hey, it was worth a try, you know. Uh -huh. Anyway, so now um I know that it's in WordPress. Uh while I'm playing around, what I can do is um I can start a WP scan. Let's see if I have it installed. Yeah, nice, WP scan, okay minus or colon url it was a https slash slash breaks dot dhm uh ah oh, the ssl of course so we're going to add a flag it says disable uh tls or this disable tls check that's what it was if i remember it correctly uh what what is going on did i say check instead of checks I'm an idiot. Okay. All right. I think I think it's working now. The remote website is up, but does not seem to be running WordPress. Hmm. How about that? What do you mean it's not running WordPress? I mean it's right there. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. Uh, what have we got here? Da, 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 da. Interesting finding. Uh, Server so Apache, of course. Robots TXE found, which I've already checked. Um, it's got one of this file. Um, RPC system to be enabled. Uh, doesn't help us in any way. Logins there. I've already tried them. A readme found. I don't think there's going to be anything in there. Let's see. Let's see if we've. Let's see if there's anything. Okay. Da, 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 da. It's the famous install, share the love. I might be able to use this one later. Let's see what else do we have. The external WP cron seems to be enabled. Direct access to aggressive detection. Um, insecure. How about that? Nice. Alright, so that's one thing that we could use to our advantage. So let's go to our um, folder, which is... Um, Oh, I am in the desktop pre -class. that's good. Am I there? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah, nice. So, nano. Um, info, why not? Uh, what am I doing? Uh, I lost it. 
Jeez. Uh, all right, so let's copy this. Uh, <coughs> put it over here. This is something that we could be using in the future. Uh, da, 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 generator. WordPress team uses bricks. Da, 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 version 1.95. Uh, found style passive detection, 80% confident. That's 60% confident. Okay. All right. So this seems like there's a few things that we can try. Let's start with like the minimum thing. So let's start with a the theme, and then if we can't breach that one, we go up to the WordPress, and if we can't do that, we'll try to get into like something on top of that. So let's start with the child, and then go through the parents, and then you know upper level than that. So um. Um, what is this? What was the theme called? Bricks. Also, uh, one easy giveaway, I think it's going to be Bricks. For whatever reason, is because the name of the challenge is Bricks. And then the WordPress theme that is being used is Bricks. So it's kind of cheating, but it sounds like it might be vulnerable. Uh, let's give it a go, you know. I'm not sure. Um, copy this. Um, Alright, let's see. Let's Google. Uh, what am I doing? Bricks version one point nine five. Bricks WordPress. Uh, shouldn't explode as well. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, before I even do that, do we have it in a search exploit? I highly doubt it, but it's worth a try. Search exploit bricks. What have you got? Uh, yada yada yada. Not nothing in there. What if I just call it brick? Hmm. Okay, nothing in there. That's fair enough. All right. You know. Uh, WordPress bricks build a remote code execution. I think RCE says. Oh, nice. Okay, so pff, let's give it a go. Let's see what he does. There's nothing to lose. Copy a link. Let's go to our folder. Um, just write it out. I don't need this. W get this over here. Uh, that's what we have. Change drive to main. Ooh, wait a minute. Unzip. Uh, do I not have an unzip? Main zip. Unzip is not a command. Yeah, there. Bro, what are you? Oh, unizip, bro. I'm an idiot. Okay, unzip main dot zip. All right. Um. All right. So what have we got here? Change drive to CVE. This one. You know what? Let's just run the Python file. Python three CVE. This this this. No module name request. So I think we can ignore that. Not a problem, import request, so pip install requests. Uh, what? What is going on here? This little config file is deprecated, will not work. This has already been satisfied. Oh, wait a minute. I think. Uh, not this again. I kind of remember roughly when I was making the video for my Raspberry Pi tray. I think I had this problem. Far out. Uh, so I think the way to get out of this is by creating a virtual environment and then installing everything in there. Uh, so let's just create a virtual environment. So virtual EMV. Let's call it a VENV. Could be anything. Uh, Alright, so what has it done? A creative virtual environment. Okay, so that's good. So let's put the source for the virtual environment uh, env to uh, let's activate. That's how you do it. So we are in the virtual environment folder now. So if I do pip install requirements, what is it? Could not find a version. What was it called? Let me try and install. Uh, let me try and run the Python script first. Request, sorry, my bad. So pip install requests. Oh, come on, bro. Uh, brick ice, beer, so beautiful soup. All right, um, 
pip install uh, bs4 sounds like a load of bs over here but yeah anyway um oh, wait pip install rich imagine being rich was that easy please tell me it runs now are uh, you freaking kidding me so pip install uh, this is gonna be prompt toolkit. All right, you know what? My typing is not very good, so let's do that. <sighs> Still, if he says I'm gonna have to install any more packages, I'm just gonna throw this thing out. Oh, what am I? Um, light progress. Paste this. All right, all right. That's more like it. That's good. Uh, so what am I doing here? Is a da, 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 file minus is URL. Okay. So we're gonna do that, and then we do this and HTTPS less less um, bricks. Is it brick or bricks? Brick dot dhm. Wait, it was bricks. <laughs> Ah, uh, nice! What the heck? That was quick. All right, so I'm gonna data dubs uh, default. Uh, da, 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 da. can I do su? No. All right. All right. So I think we've got a um, well, we've got a shell. So we're in the Etsy www default folder. Uh, read me, yada yada yada. Index of PHP. Read me the HTML. All right, yeah, nice. Okay, so hmm. So we've successfully gained access to the server, but in order to maintain the control, we'll probably need a more stable way to interact with the system, uh, which is going to be a reverse shell. So let's try and see if we can get a reverse shell on this thing. Um, let's go to revshells.com. Revshells. Is it dot com? I don't know. Revshell. Yeah. Revshells.com. So it was revshell. Okay. IP and port. So listener is going to be our machine. So our machine's IP address. Wait, is it going to be our machine? No, it's going to be. It's going to be a remote machine, or the tunnel machine. IP address. So let's just do IP. IP. Oh, they haven't done it on the Mac already. Tunnel is ten dot four dot hundred two dot two fifty three. Looks like. A remote machine is going to be that one. Um, a port, let's just say 4444. And uh, yeah, sounds about right to me. So we go out here. So what we're doing out here is we're starting on Netcat so that um, we'll start a listener in this port. And whenever we run the command from inside, from the reverse shell, should be able to grab onto that. So over here we go back to Python. Um, that's uh, bin sh. Is that what we want? Encoding none. Sure. Uh, let's run this one. See if we can do it. Do anything? No. Okay. That's a shame. Uh, how about? Just a bash. Can we do that? Tell me we can do that. Four, 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 four. No. Come on, bro. All right. So um, it looks like it won't give us a remote shell. Uh, that's fair enough. I've tried a few times. Didn't work. You know what? Not the end of the world. We've still got a shell in here. It's just that we can't do TTY, which is fine by me. I don't really mind. 
All right, so let's go back to our try hack me, see what it's asking, because I think we can answer a few questions. Um, what is the context content on the hidden txt file? Is that hidden txt file in here? Uh, what is that? Uh, whatever that is, cat uh, six. Ah, oh, bro, I can't do tabs. See, this is why reverse shell live is so good. Um, all right, let's do that. And I think that's the content of the hidden file. I'm just gonna save it for now in here somewhere. Info over here, we can put the flag in here, which I've already found. Okay, that's good enough. What is the name of the suspicious process? So, so I think we've got another clue. Uh, we need to check into the process. So, um, all right, so, um, let's just do systemctl. Um, Let's see all the running services. So systemctl units type equals service and uh, equals running. All right. Um, so this is where I want to make it a little bit larger. Holy heck! I don't mean to make a full screen. All right. That's Fair enough. Oh no, nice. that looks interesting. So um, we've got a service that's called uh, Ubuntu. That seems very interesting. What we're going to do now is we'll look more into that one. So let's copy this. Uh, so system CTL um, status uh, Ubuntu the service. And uh, as you can see, it is running over here. Uh, da, 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 da. And we can do systemctl. Um, oh, I should have just done cat Ubuntu the service. And uh, as you can see, it's running something called nminet dialog. Hmm, restart on failure, one by user target, network manager, nmi.dialog. What even is that? So, in here we can see the exec start part for this um, service. So, from here we can do ls um, library network. Actually, it's a lot better to copy it, I think. Um, So if we copy that and paste it over here, uh, what? That's the part of the file. So over here we can see all the file that is related to this one. So I feel like we've got an answer for most of these. So the hidden text file in the folder, which we've already saved in a notepad. What is the name of the suspicious process? Um, actually, let's just copy that because um, we might as well get away with it, you know. So paste this, submit. Uh, what is the name of the suspicious process? That was a Ubuntu. Where is it? Ubuntu service. Ah, oh, sorry, that was a process, not a not a service. I think. All right. So the process. Uh, what is the name of the suspicious process? So the process itself was called a. And I'm in a dialog. So that's three of them. Uh, what is the log name of the minor instance? So it reckons it's got a minor in there. So let's see what files we have. So actually, let's just do ls minus al and see what these are. So it seems that uh, the VPN, cont d, dispatcher to d, and system connection seems to be the folder. So we will be going to this folder later, but let's check this file first. Um, on it to conf, on it to conf. Okay, so that seems to be the file. So let's just do that and um, 
replace that with cat and um, inet.conf, okay? Not conf to d. Where it came from? Inet.conf. Ooh. Well, that's interesting. Righto. Miner. Yep. What did it say? What's the log? name of the miner instance so it looks like this is the log name of the miner i should have just done tail a it's taken forever um so i'm guessing it's the inet.conf submit and there you go what is the wallet address of the miner instance um mining minor thread started that does look like is it repeated so i think it's repeated after a while so Let's see if that's the one. Uh oh, okay. If that's not the case, let's just go Cyber Chef and uh, we'll put a. Let's do that. So that does look like a crypto address. We can go one step further and we can go Blockchain Explorer. Blockchain Explorer and then um, slap it in there. Uh, not that one, not the ad, bro. Just give me that one. Of course, it's uh, guided by a cloud flare. Yes, I am a human so far. All right, um, we'll just put that one there. Send it. No results found. Hmm, that is uh, why. Okay, yeah, right. So it looks like it's repeated. So we're just going to remove that bit. Let's see that one. And uh, look like we found something, and that seems to be the Bitcoin address. So we can go back to our try hack me. Where do you go? So what's the uh, what is the wallet address of the miner instance? That looks like that one. So we'll just submit that one. And the wallet address has been used as an involvement in transaction between wallet belonging to the which group. So now you've got to do a little bit more research on uh, who this wallet belongs to. I think. Hey guys, post-production shotgun over here. So while trying to edit the video, I realized my QuickTime player acted up and only recorded an audio. So I couldn't record the last bit, but the only bit that was left, luckily, was uh, me trying to find out or trace uh, which group was responsible for this attack. And uh, it turned out to be a lockbit ransomware group. So I have included an article in the description section of this video. Um, this article is from CyberGov Australia. Um, when you have a free time, you can go have a look. It's pretty good. But yeah, I won't be recreating this right now because I think it deserves a video on its own because it's a whole process of an OSINT and I want to do a separate video on this one because this is very interesting. But yeah, uh, before we wrap it up, uh, let's quickly go over all the steps and uh, how they map to MITRE attack tactics and techniques. So we started off with uh, reconnaissance and initial setup. First, we had to add the target domain to our Etsy host file to resolve the domain name. So this falls under application layer protocol T1071001, where attackers use a normal web protocol to interact with the system. Uh, next, we scan the target using Rust scan to identify open ports and target. So this step matches to network server scanning, which is T1046. Third step of this uh, process was uh, exploring the web application. So we checked out the WordPress site, uh, which led us to find that it was vulnerable to exploitation. This falls under exploit public facing application, which is T1190, as we identified an entry point for our attack. So number four, it doesn't really ties into MITRE. It kind of ties into MITRE, but it's not used in the actual use case. So we didn't run this thing in a victim's computer. I don't know, this doesn't really tie to MITRE. It, it kind of does tie to MITRE, but not in the right way. So if it was to run within the victim's computer, um, then it would fall under, so it would fall under ingress tool transfer, which is T1105, um, where attackers use this to download and install tools onto compromised machine for the lateral movement and exploitation. But in this case, uh, we didn't run this in victim's computer. 
So this setup was on our machine and uh, not transferred to the target. So this doesn't really map directly to MITRE, however, it's part of a preparation for the exploitation. Step five, uh, we exploited the vulnerability that was there. So we ran the exploit against Bricks machine or Bricks theme, um, and he gave us an access to the server. So this fits into exploit, uh, exploit public facing application, which is T1190, as we targeted the WordPress vulnerability to gain control. Step number six, uh, this was an attempt. We weren't successful. So this was trying to get a reverse shell. So to maintain the access, we tried to set up a reverse shell using Netcat. This action falls under application layer protocol T1071001, um, which attackers use to maintain communication with their compromised system through common web protocols. So state seven of the attack, we then snooped around the file system for anything useful. Um, that's where we found one of the flag. So this maps to data from local system. T1005. So in this step, usually attackers uh, try to go into a system and find the sensitive data. Um, on number eight of this uh, process, it was uh, searching for a configuration file. So we dug deeper to find the configuration file um, tied to the crypto miner or cryptocurrency miner. So it aligns with the uh, archive collected data. So stage number nine, process investigation. We looked into running process uh, using system commands to identify suspicious activities like the miner running on the machine. So this includes miner running on the machine. Um, this action fits under process discovery, which is T1057, where attackers investigate the system's active process. And uh, finally, uh, number 10, Lastly, we found the logs for the minor activity. We decoded the Bitcoin wallet address, which again fits into data from local system, which is T1005. We extracted the valuable data that gave us more insight into the attack. And there you have it, a quick recap on how we mapped this uh, MITRE attack techniques to a real world attack for the brick challenge. So if this video end up helping you guys in any way, consider subscribing. Also consider subscribing for the OSINT video that I talked about earlier. Um, and I hope you guys are safe. Happy pen testing. I'll hopefully see you guys in another video.